Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here, and thank you so much for tuning in. How about if we go on another local fish store road trip over here in the uh, countryside of Tennessee? And this time we're going to go out to uh, Oceanside Aquariums, about an hour from my house. And I uh, had to fight the, uh, the Friday afternoon traffic and slow down to 74 miles per, per hour here. <laughs> I'm definitely not in Los Angeles any longer. This is a rush hour Friday afternoon. Got there pretty quickly. And uh, Oceanside Aquariums, you can see the phone number there. And uh, they're in a town called Mount Juliet. Mount Juliet, Tennessee. And when I walked in, the first thing I noticed was very similar to what I noticed when I walk into most fish stores here in, uh, in Tennessee, is that it's very clean, very orderly, very well-kept. Based on the name, I was expecting to, to find mostly salt water. And uh, there's some live rock, some coral. And I was thinking, okay, maybe this is primarily a salt water shop. But a lot of their supplies are fresh water. And after looking around, I discovered that they're probably 50 50, maybe even 60 40 in favor of fresh water. The person working the desk was very helpful, and uh, he gave me the, the green light to go ahead and start filming. So I went ahead and started getting some shots of the tank. Look at this little clownfish. How cute is that? Love the shape and colors of saltwater fish. The centerpiece of the uh, shop is a... Um, a coral display very nice uh, large coral display with both hard and soft corals some of you have asked if I'll ever start a reef aquarium and certainly when I see stuff like this it, it's a uh, very very tempting but the truth is I have my hands full with the projects I'm trying to get underway right now but this sure makes it tempting very well cut look how clean the water is some of the colors of the corals are absolutely beautiful. Look at the color on this guy. Very, very pretty. And there's Dory. Very popular fish in the hobby right now. Unfortunately, I think they're getting fished out. I've heard some people pleading, please don't buy them. The uh, dark side of a Disney movie. Take a look at these guys. quite striking the fish with the uh, with the polka dots to me is just absolutely um, breathtaking reminds me of a little bit of a trigger fish looks like he's wearing uh, wearing pajamas or some kind of a clown suit just absolutely beautiful right across from that rack of salt on the left side the next rack over you start getting into some of the freshwater fish in this case, some of the platies and some of the live bears. That white platy was very, very pretty. I only, rem <clears throat> I only remember seeing them in gold. We used to call them Mickey Mouse platies. Some black neons, some betta. Seem to be getting along okay. Those black neons look pretty fat, pretty well fed. One of them in there looks like he crossbred with a hatchet fish neons at a dollar 99 can't go wrong with that i found these plants to be very very attractive and as i was walking through the store i started thinking about how i have this extra 29 gallon and how i maybe should start a community tank maybe with some plants maybe some tetras look at these white tetras i'm familiar with the darker ones but these white ones are very pretty almost a platinum Your tiger barbs at $2.99. That's a pretty good bargain. I think they're, they're more expensive, expensive than that at the large box stores like your PetSmart and Petco. Some more platies. Good looking fish. Didn't see any dead fish. And I noticed that the... Uh, that a lot of the tanks on the saltwater side each had their own separate filtration. Not sure if that's, if that's also the case here. 
Nice Rasboras. More live bears. That bluefish in there is very pretty. Almost a neon color. If I had if I had to make one suggestion for this store, I would just say to maybe get those front panels a little bit more clean. That'll definitely result in more fish sales. Just my opinion. But otherwise, the fish look healthy and the tanks on the inside look clean. And that, to me, is really the most important thing. Lemon tetras, rasboras, some cardinals. Certainly a good assortment if you have a community tank. And of course he had the ever, ever so popular glowfish. I seem to be running into, into these more and more. They were kind of an uncommon novelty at first. Now they seem to be everywhere. Had a few Anubia, Anubius plants there as well. You have this Jack Dempsey looking a little bit, a uh, little depressed, kind of hanging out there. Big boy. An assortment of uh, Mabuna, including the uh, the dreaded Uratus <laughs> and peacocks as well, S sold as a just sort of general peacock, you know pick your fish and roll your dice very hard to find shops that actually have specific types that are named and separated out the purple king kong here was actually a pretty attractive fish a little little aggressive but look at that parrot fish i love that purple color on him not crazy about the shape looks like someone hit him in the head with a crowbar but definitely an interesting fish more community fish Beautiful gouramis. I love that sa that that substrate. That looks a little bit like that uh, substrate I'm going to be using in my new project. Take a look at this guy. It looks like somebody took uh, I think a type of a birch, I think. But someone took that head off of a turtle and put it on the body of an eel. Very prehistoric looking. Really like the look of that guy. As you can see, the prices are very fair. A bit of a drive. But if you're going to be stocking up a community tank worth the drive, because you'd probably save quite a bit of money. Some common angelfish. Some glassfish there in the background. Very unusual. Amazing, the kind of things you see. Nature is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here? These guys remind me of red tail sharks, but they're not. And uh, they seem to be real nippy with each other. They don't quite have that jet black body and that bright, bright red, red tailed shark. But a red tailed shark can be uh, pretty nippy and pretty aggressive as well. At least the ones I've had. A little marble angel there, very pretty. A knife fish in there. I think they get pretty big. I like these black and white angels. Very pretty. He had a little pleco back there. Looks like an albino pleco. A little common angel fish. Kind of angel fish we all grew up seeing at the local fish store. Then I stumbled across this guy. And he seemed really mellow. Active. Eating. Moving around. And uh, we sort of made a connection. He was brought in by somebody who said they'd had him for about four years. He looks a little old to me. and uh, But still, I liked him. And I've been looking for a long time for a, uh, for a green tear of this variety. So I decided to go ahead and, uh, and go for it. And so he went ahead and caught him, put him in a big bag for me. Now 
as he was catching them, I was thinking to myself, where in the world am I going to put this fish? I can't really throw him in with the Eureka Red. Maybe I could have. But, uh, and he certainly can't go with the other South Americans. He's a bit too big. So my wheels were turning. But I had him in the bag. And so I had no choice but to strap him in and take him home. And so I hit the road. And uh, again, some Friday afternoon traffic. Had to slow down to 65. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh boy, it's definitely not Southern California. But at any rate, I headed home and uh, had to figure out where to put them. So I had to uh, put together my 29 gallon real quick. And you can see him here. He looks like he's acclimated. This is the next morning. I left him. I left him kind of. I left him alone and in the dark, right after putting him in, just so he could kind of chill and relax a little bit. But he's starting to color up a little bit. He's moving around. He does look like an older fish. Has a little bit of a sunken belly. I'm going to feed him, feed him really well and see if I can fatten him up. And if not, I'll run a little paracleanse through him. Maybe he's got a parasite. But, um, you know, he's he'll stay in this tank for a while, quarantined. So he's not going to be cross-contaminating anybody. But I love the markings in the face. I had to film them from a distance, and this part of the video is with my cell phone, so you're not going to get the uh, quite the sharpness as you'd get with my other camera. But you can still see he's a he's a good-looking fish. And the way I was able to throw this tank together was by uh, by by pulling some media out of some of the filters, and uh, you can see his belly there. I need I need to fatten him up a little. But I had to pull some uh, pinky floss, two sheets out of each of these uh, hang-on-back filters, these, these Marineland Emperor 400s. So I pulled four sheets of uh, pinky floss that was loaded up with, uh, with detritus, code word for beneficial bacteria. Then I pulled uh, two sponges out of this Expert Matic that I've been running for quite some time in a quarantine tank currently the home of the Eureka Red. So I put two used, well-used sponges in this brand new Expert Matic, left one of the sponges new, and then I, uh, I put those four sheets of pinky floss in the mesh bag that you see in the background there. So that gave me a lot of beneficial bacteria. And plus, I added a little bit of that uh, Turbo, Fritz Turbo, and so the tank was uh, good to go with a, uh, a good colony of bacteria and a, uh, a nice big fish to produce the ammonia needed to keep that bacteria alive and going. So uh, I was going to call him uh, Cabezon, which is Spanish for big headed, and, uh, or maybe headquarters, uh, which... <laughs> because his head is so big. But my wife came down and uh, said that she thinks that we should call him Verde, which is uh, the color green in Spanish and the name of a book we used to read to our kids when they were small, Verde. So let's welcome Verde to the family. And I thank you very much for taking this road trip with me. And I appreciate you. That's it for me.